Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the GE T&D India Limited Learnings Q3 and FY24 conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Megha Gupta from GET and &E India Limited. Thank you and over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Gaurav. Good evening, everyone, and a very happy new year. We welcome you all to the GET and &E India Limited earnings call for the third quarter and nine months of the financial year ending 2024. I am Megha Gupta from GET and &E India Finance and Investor Relationship Team. We're delighted to have you all here on the call. During this call, we will discuss company's financial performance, including operational highlights. We'll share key updates and we'll address any questions that you may have. Before we begin, I would like to highlight a few important notes for today's call. Firstly, we have just declared results for the third quarter and nine months of the financial year ending 23-24. The said results are now available on our company's website. Further, we have also prepared an analyst presentation for the quarter, which will be discussed during the call. The set presentation has been emailed to you and is also available on our company's website. Also, I would like to take a moment to remind everyone that today's discussion may contain few forward-looking statements which are subject to risk and uncertainties. These statements are based on our current expectations and actual results may vary materially from those expressed or implied. We encourage you to refer to our public filings and disclosures for comprehensive understanding of the factors that could impact our future performance. With this now, let me introduce GT India management team available on the call. During this call, we will be joined by Mr. Sandeep Zamzaria, CEO and MD of the company. Along with him, we are also joined by Mr. Sushil Kumar, full time director and CFO of the company, Mr. Abhishek Srivastava, head business operations, Ms. Kanika Aroda, communications leader, Ms. Anupriya Garg, company secretary of the company. We will be having a dedicated question and answer session towards the end of the presentation, where you can ask your questions and seek clarification on any topic of your interest. Thank you once again for joining us today. We appreciate your continued support and trust in GET and &D India Limited. Now I'll hand over the call to Sandeep for his opening remarks. Over to you, Sandeep. Thanks, Mega, and good evening, everyone. Appreciate you taking the time to join us today and for your continued interest in GET and &D India Limited. I'll begin by providing a brief overview of our third quarter of the financial year FI 23-24. After that, I will pass on to my colleagues to share further operational and financial highlights. Globally, there is an increasing focus on energy transition, and that is leading to expansion of power markets, including India, and that presents a great opportunity for a company like ours. With priorities on grid expansion, modernization, and digitization, Along with the commitment to market-driven solutions, the sector is poised for a significant growth. Driven by this rising demand in global and Indian market, we are excited to share a continued surge in our order book in Q3, which saw a booking of 23.7 billion INR, up by 204% year-on-year. Customer trust is our, in our reliable and high-quality transformers that fueled order growth cementing our leading position in this segment. Few of the key orders that we have received include Grid Solutions, a GE group company for supply of HVDC transformers, and from Power Grid Corporation of India for supply of 765 kV power transformers and shunt reactors for their various transmission projects in India. Apart from transformers, we have also secured an order from BHEL for supply of 420 kV GIS for the NTPC Tulsa uh, Stage 3 project, among many other wins which have been highlighted in the presentation. Our Q3 revenue stood at 8.4 billion versus 7.8 billion Indian rupees in Q3 FY 22-23, up by 8% year on year, with a notable increase in our profits. On a nine month basis, our FY 23-24 revenue stood at 22.5 billion versus 20.7 billion INR in 22-23, up by 8.9% year-on-year. Our profit before tax for the quarter was at 730 million INR, 
compared to 124 million INR in the corresponding quarter of the previous financial year. From a nine-month perspective, the profit before tax to debt 1,619 million versus 269 million in the nine-month period of FY 22-23. This improvement in profitability and balance sheet paved the way for the company becoming debt-free in Q3 with a positive cash flow and cash equivalent of 1,573 million INR. Cash generation was at 1,687 million Indian rupees during the third quarter FY 23-24 and 3,303 million Indian rupees during nine months of FY 23-24. This achievement can be attributed to global energy landscape that is seeing expedited pace of energy transition across sectors including power. Export orders were up during the quarter driven by transformers and high voltage product, reaffirming our make in India for India and the world approach. Lastly, our continuous focus on adopting a lean mindset and implementing operational efficiencies has allowed us to streamline our processes, reduce waste and optimize resource allocation. The accomplishments of this quarter not only highlight our expertise, but also showcase our ability to provide innovative solutions that meet the evolving demands of the India's energy landscape. CA has issued a draft energy plan, national electricity plan, which covers the assets created in 2017 to 22, detailing the plans for the period of 22-27 and a prospective plan for the period of 27-32. This plan gives us strong confidence on the future of transmission. We are seeing technology domains like HVDC, both LCC and VSC, Statcom, digital substations forming the backbone of the future growth. We are dedicated to con uh, concreting a sustainable and resilient energy future for India and eagerly anticipate the exciting opportunities that lie ahead. I would like to sincerely express our thanks to all the stakeholders of GT and the India Limited. Thank you, and now I invite Abhishek for the further insights. So, thanks, Sandeep. Uh, continuing with our endeavor to create the grid for future, we commissioned four more key substations uh, for our customers in the last quarter. The first one was uh, for Power Grid at Kopili, which is in the state of Assam. So, the substation is 132 kb GIS substation, where we commissioned the GIS base plus uh, 160 MVA transformer. This is going to improve the reliability of power available in the state of Assam. This serves as a power evacuation substation for 200 megawatts uh, Nipco hydropower plant. The second key uh, achievement for us in the last quarter was uh, to uh, commission the first interstate transmission project for Renew. So this was the first uh, uh, renewable energy evacuation uh, transmission system that they had set up. So it is a 1500 megawatt uh, power evacuation system, improving the reliability uh, for the state of Karnataka. And the scope was predominantly 400 kV AIS. We commissioned 125 MBR reactors, which are our own supply, and uh, 500 MB ICT. The third substation uh, was the biggest interstate uh, uh, transmission uh, project for Adani, which is at uh, WKTL uh, WK Varora, which was the last substation that we commissioned in the month of October. This is a big 765 kV AIS scope, and uh, in that also we commissioned 80 uh, MBR uh, single phase reactors in addition to the AIS base that we had. The fourth key addition for us uh, was at uh, BPC Chumdu, uh, and uh, this is in Bhutan. Wherein we uh, commissioned 80 MVA transformer along with 220 kV GIS base, and this substation again, uh, it is noticeable to say that uh, it's going to strengthen the transmission network of uh, the country of Bhutan. So, with this, I hand over to uh, Sushil for further updates. Thanks, Abhishek. Good evening, everyone. Uh, talking about orders on page 6, Sandeep already mentioned uh, the numbers. So, basically, for the quarter, we achieved 23.6 billion of orders, which was almost three times the order that we did in the quarter three of last year. And similarly, on a nine-month basis, we had 44.5 billion of orders compared to 18.6 billion of orders in the last uh, uh, nine months of the last financial year, representing 2.4 uh, times increase. Key orders in the uh, already touched in its peak. Talking about our financial performance on page seven, our revenues increased by about 8% in the quarter, and we achieved about 8.3% 
3 billion of uh, uh, revenue in the quarter. However, a remarkable improvement in the performance happened in terms of profitability, whether in terms of EBITDA or profit before tax or profit after tax. We generated an EBITDA of 923 million, and this was 11% of revenue and represented a six point increase versus the quarter four, quarter three of the last financial year. And similar improvement in the profitability happened throughout the other key parameters like profit before tax and profit after tax. Similarly, on a nine month basis, we had a revenue of 22.5 billion, representing 8.9% increase. However, the EBITDA also did uh, uh, well, we performed well, wherein we generated EBITDA of 2.2 billion INR, which was 5 percentage points higher than the last year, nine months, and uh, our EBITDA for the nine months stand at around 10 percent. Uh, as Sandeep mentioned, we became, we became debt free, and now we have cash and cash equivalents of about 1.5 billion rupees with us. I would also like to highlight the change in the directorship that happened in this quarter. So, Mr. Ratim Basu is appointed as the chairman and board of director. Uh, he is appointed in, under the category of uh, independent director. And in addition, we had two non-independent, non-executive directors, Fabrice Omo and Jizu Gonzalez. Their detailed profile are also given in the presentation. Now, talking a bit more about the financial numbers, on page 8, we have given the split of order booking, revenue, and orders in hand. So, in terms of orders of 23.4 billion IMR, 54% of the orders were received from the domestic market and uh, about 46% orders were from the export market. And this will really um, uh, highlight the shift that is gradually happening between uh, domestic and export market. We have uh, basically increased our share of order booking more from the export market. Uh, revenue, 39% of the revenue for the quarter was from the export market and 61% uh, revenue from the domestic market. In terms of order in hand, 72% uh, of order in hand was from the private segment customer, about 20% orders from the this, uh, this central utility and about 8% of orders from the state utility. In page 9, we have given some of the financial trends, how we are making uh, progress in terms of our financial performance quarter on quarter, and every quarter for the last five quarters, we have been improving on almost all important KPIs. I will take a couple of minutes on the page 10. So, in today's audit committee and board meeting, the board of directors approved certain additional related party transactions, and since these are material related party transactions, these will require the shareholder approval. In the due course of time, we will send the postal ballot meeting for the consideration of the shareholder. I will talk about these uh, three related party transactions now. The first one is LM Wind Power Blades India Private Limited. So we have already sought approval of the shareholders to the extent of borrowing from the cash pool, G cash pool from this entity for about 5 billion and an interest deposit that we can place for the surplus fund with this entity for 1.5 billion. As we mentioned, we already have about 1.5 billion cash, and our effort is to generate and produce more cash for the company in the coming quarters to come. So we're seeking additional approval of 3.5 billion for uh, the intercorporate deposit and lending to the cash pool, taking the total uh, lending limit to 5 billion INR. So that's the one resolution in the postal balance that will happen. The second and third are related to the increased volume that we expect from the export market to our group companies, mostly for our high voltage product business. So for grid solution SAS and grid solution Middle East, we expect and we are in discussion with these companies for additional volume of about 10 billion INR. The expected timeline is going to be most likely Q, Q1 of the next financial year, that's our aim. But uh, let's say next six months before the next AGM, we may have this 10 billion of uh, order booking that we are negotiating, uh, and hence we'll seek uh, shareholder approval for the same as well. In case the shareholders have any questions about the transaction, you are welcome to ask any questions. And with that, we'll now open up for the questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchdown phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. 
Participants are requested to use handsets only while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Parikshit Kandapal from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, uh, Sandeep. Uh, congratulations on a great quarter. Uh, I think this is the third quarter of a continuous turnaround for the company and we have become net cash as well. So my first question is on, uh, so we have been positively surprised by the uh, related party transaction order bookings going out and we had earlier with Grid Solution UK and Grid yeah. entities. So uh, how do you see this uh, related party transaction. I mean, do you think there is still significant scope for next year uh, for order bookings from the group companies? So, thanks, Parikshit. Uh, I think, you know, as you are aware that energy transition is not only an Indian phenomena, but it's a global phenomena. So, I think uh, one of the aspects what we are seeing, there is a surge of demand which is coming from a lot of geographies. So I think uh, this is where we are also supporting our uh, group companies in uh, acquiring the orders and uh, being a part of the energy transition globally. So, yeah, but I, but my question was: uh, Are you looking at most such kind of opportunities? Do you think the volume of business increasing even from here on? I mean, uh, for the next year. Yeah, definitely. That's the target to increase the volume of the business as well. Okay. And uh, we are also, uh, this is something like the approval what we are taking. The deliveries are not going to be like in a 12 months time frame, but it's going to be a bit extended time frame. Yeah. Okay. So that was my second question. I mean, generally the companies your peers are talking about under investment in capacity building globally and as well as in India. So for your order book, uh, we have been winning new orders, but uh, I think 1,000 crores we've been winning in this quarter 2,400, but we have been lagging behind in terms of execution ramp up. So has the lead time of deliveries increased significantly because of the shortage in, uh, in the capacity? So if you can help us quantify what is the current capacity utilization and what would have been the innovation in the delivery lead time for the products? So Parishit, I'll just say here that, okay, for example, today when we are looking and when we are looking at about 1000 crores of water, uh, you will see there's a, there's a substantial part which has been associated with Transformers and reactors and transformers and reactors have a slightly higher delivery in the market. Like the deliveries are starting starting from like 12 to 15 months to 18 to 24 months. And when we look at, for example, the, um, the HUTC transformers, what we have booked, the deliveries are two years plus. So, uh, and uh, we, we expect that maybe after a quarter or so, the ramp up of execution will also start and the revenues will also start uh, growing up. Uh, that is the expectation. Okay. And this is the last question on capacity expansion. So if, I mean, you see both uh, ex export demand as well as demand from uh, domestic market. So what will be the current capacity utilization and any plans for further expansion in capacity and what could be the case of outlays for that? So, you know, capacity is, of course, for example, with our lean, uh, we have uh, we have ensured that the factories have, like, uh, my, the, the base which were earlier used for kind of one voltage level are now used for multiple voltage levels. So, capacity-wise, we have made, made our uh, uh, factories more flexible depending upon the load which is coming. And uh, for many of the factories, we are, I would still not say that we have reached a kind of 100% capacity um, uh, limit uh, for looking for an expansion. So first thing would be that uh, to reach that limit and uh, and then also there would be other like lean uh, projects, etc. that how to debottle like capacities and then capex also can be done like for example if there is a debottle like in one process, you just debottle make that process and then increase the capacity. So capacity expansion doesn't mean that you have to put up a new factory only. So based on the requirement and based on this thing, we are constantly evaluating and whenever there is something like that, uh, definitely uh, we will be uh, taking the calls. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you and wish you the best. Thanks, Parikshit.
The next question is from the line of Mohit Kumar from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Good evening, sir. And thanks for the question. So my first question is that you have taken a substantial order flow inflow from UK subsidy UK companies. Does it impact any way our ability to participate in upcoming domestic HVDC opportunity? So this is something which is like uh, kind of, but I I don't think that it is going to impact our participation in the domestic HVDC. Understood. So my second question is that, uh, of course, the domestic tending activities have picked up sharply, uh, but I think it is it is not translated into order inflow in a particular quarter. Uh, does it mean that uh, the pickup which happened, especially in the Q3, will materialize into a much much larger order inflow for next uh, two things? So I think. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, Mr. Kumar, your line is breaking, so we are not able to catch your words. Can you please uh, check the line and repeat your question? Sure. Is it better now? Yeah, now it is better. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My question was that on the domestic pickup, given the fact that a large amount of tending has happened in Q3, F24, and there is a healthy pipeline of TVCV opportunities in the next uh, 12 to 15 months, does it mean that our uh, order inflow should see a substantial increase in especially in the next 12 months? How are you seeing the inquiry from the, from the domestic side? Yeah, I think uh, you are right, uh, Mohit, that one, the kind of traction what we are seeing on TDCB market, definitely we'll get the advantage of uh, booking or the increased market uh, uh, as the pipeline, the time will be much better. I think we, there will be an impact on the order book situation as well. But we have to also understand the fact that this number contains a large order from UK Grid Solutions, which is like close to about 800 crores or 8 billion. So that also means you need to take into factor while uh, recognizing the number for this quarter of order intake. And the last question, so why other income was negative during the quarter? So... Uh, in the first six months, there was a forex gain, and hence it was recognized as other income in the quarter one and quarter two. But on a white TV nine month basis, there is a forex loss, and hence to the extent of income recognized in the first six months, it has been reversed in the quarter, taking white TV nine month number as gain, and the net loss forex loss in the nine month is recognized as other expense. So it's more an accounting of forex where it works quarter on quarter. Understood. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Avijit from Yes Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening, sir, uh, and congratulations on a very strong all-round performance. So my question is on the domestic execution front. What we have seen in the last four to five quarters is that the order inflow from domestic side has been strong relatively, but the revenue has declined, uh, especially if we talk about Q3. We have seen a 10% revenue decline in the domestic business. So can you comment on the uh, execution in the domestic business? What is impacting this kind of uh, slowdown? So Abhijit, it is about the phasing of the project, the timeline when the customer gave us to execute the project, and whatever project uh, timeline was there, we have executed on time. So, I, as Sandeep mentioned, with a strong order booking in the quarter and nine month basis, hopefully in the coming quarters to come, both domestic as, as well as export revenue should pick up. Right. And, uh, so, hopping a little bit more on the capacity addition front. So, right now, there is no plan of any ground scale or greenfield addition in capacity. Is that, is that a right assumption? Yes. All right, because I mean, uh, in the event of, uh, I mean, we have this idea that you know the parent entity has a lot of HPDC orders, and going forward, uh, you know, uh, would there be a capacity constraint in terms of order booking, even if, uh, you know, in terms of the cost structure, in terms of the profitability of the project, the entity uh, assumes that we are uh, the one to deliver the project. 
But if there is a capacity constraint, will that be a, a concern for us in terms of order booking? You know, particularly large orders like you know one we booked recently. Well, I don't think that as of today capacity concern capacity um, constraint has emerged in any way for us to book the new orders. Uh, so when that when the time will come, probably we'll take a decision at that point of time. But uh, like for example, lot of geographies, uh, the order booking conditions they come with their own respective conditions as well. So for example, maybe. in the western world if the orders come with a with a uh, rider that you need to create local capacity then probably capacity get created according to the customer demand as well so i am just saying that uh, basically we will have to see the capacity creation depending upon the need and uh, also we are open to it but today we have no concrete plans of doing it Understood, sir. So, just one last one. Uh, so, what is that criteria that you know the parent will decide to give a particular order to any entity out of the uh, the number of entities it has globally? So, what would be that those those variables that you know go into this kind of a decision making? So, there are multiple variables. Uh, Bijit, for example, one the first one which comes is which all factories or which all geographies are accepted with the customer. that is the first one second thing um, is also the capacity which is available which matches the time frame of the project execution as well so these are the main considerations based and third at sometimes when it is what is the um, technical experience of the required uh, and the product portfolio which is available within individual factory so these are the factors which decide from where to buy globally these decisions are taken Thanks a lot for answering the questions. Thank you, Vijay. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Omesh Rot from Nomura, India. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Good evening. Uh, congratulations for the good set of numbers. So, my first question pertains to uh, ordering from the power sector. Uh, now that you have started material order inflow from power sector, especially from thermal power. and uh, government of india is planning to add a uh, capacity closer to about 80 gigawatt over the course of next few years so what kind of addressable uh, ordering opportunity for a player like g20 has from this particular sector so umesh basically we are a company which is dedicated to the transmission side and you know the transmission is uh, generation agnostic means if it is a renewable generation and requires a transmission we are there if it is a thermal generation requires a transmission we are there if it is wind if it is hydro so we are the common factor between the various uh, generations which are there so for us for example we are manufacturing the products uh, the source of generation doesn't matter so much for the hardware products what we have so for us if it comes from thermal generation also we have absolutely no problem in addressing that market okay but specifically talking about these uh, gis orders from bhcl so uh, how much of total say uh, capital outlay this could be in terms of percentage of uh, say total cost for the uh, power plant how much of opportunity that uh, you can cater in terms of addressable market so if i really look at uh, for example it would not be so big uh, probably Uh, the the requirement of transmission in a thermal power plant will be like close to about 10%. So whatever is the capex, uh, about 10% is going to form a part of the transmission, which is associated with that power plant. So that means if a power plant is being put up, there's a substation associated with that. So that is there. But what happens is that in order to evacuate that power, then there are multiple substations which are built. if you include those substations as well then it depends upon the transmission planning and the voltage and number of substations so that is difficult to predict just off hand but dedicated as a part of the project is close to about 10% of the thermal cost got it sir sir my second question is more of uh, in the power sector ordering so 
how how much market share you have uh, across the sector especially from private sector and how how is your positioning uh, as per the uh, other competitors so you know uh, yeah, when we look at our competition and all it is very difficult to pred- i will say that okay, of course we have a prediction mechanism but or the tracking mechanism but when we really look at competition um, it is very difficult to find players who are identical to us in the domain for example there are people who are there into transmission projects but they don't manufacture the people who are into manufacturing but they are not into projects so if so in some sectors for example or in some product lines we have like the best market share the highest or the second highest market share uh, but in some um, where we have a conscious decision not to grow too much of a business because of the risk associated uh, we have taken a, a position which is like uh, to do business only with very selected clients and to do a very nominal amount of business so i would not i would not uh, track it through my market share but i would be more interested in tracking my profitability and also my uh, my profitability and cash so that that would be the two metrics which i would like to be tracked rather than market share uh, got it sir my third question is uh, related to these uh, related party transactions which are kind of uh, under uh, approved approval from the shareholders so i think uh, as i am correct now that is a uh, uh, kind of increase to close out about 3000 crore for fy24 and uh, if i look at export ordering so how much of that uh, could have been realized in first nine month of fy24 uh, so mesh your question was not uh, very clear uh, if you can probably elaborate a bit it would be helpful yeah so so basically earlier we were kind of uh, have a kind of under process for getting approval from shareholders for about close to 1800 crores of related party transactions but now that there is one new fresh entity which is from middle east and uh, there is also additional approval from existing entity which is worth rupees about 600 crore more so basically total related party transaction approval has now kind of increased to about close to 3000 crore and uh, as a part of that you must have received uh, some of the orderings as well in first nine months so basically in third quarter you have received closer to 800 crores of large order from uk grid solution so basically on this particular line how much of total ordering you have received out of say closer to 3000 crore which is kind of under approval for, for fi24 no so the approval that we are further seeking is for about 10 billion for the orders from the from the related party customers that is 6.5 billion from great solution fcs and yeah 3.5 billion from middle east entity so these 10 billion are expected to come as i mentioned the timeline is from march to august before the agm and most likely that we anticipate if we are able to win this deal it will be the quarter 1 or quarter 2 of the next financial year it will not fall in the current financial year in the current financial year we have booked uh, export or order, total orders of uh, 44.5 billion and let me just recollect how much is the uh, export percentage there just give me a sec uh, maybe we pass this question and i come back to you in a minute about the total uh, export order and how much of those are related to the group company sure sir. sir my last question is pertaining to uh, local addition so uh, can you please throw some light on key products like gi substation or uh, maybe uh, uh, switch gear have this switch gear what kind of local addition we have currently and as compared to other uh, group companies of ge located across the globe uh, how india arm is kind of uh, uh, comparatively placed as compared to on the on the lines of the local addition so i think uh, omesh sir basically you know localization is a process so it's not something that like you reach at one point and then you stop it so for example when for the products which we offer for example i'm looking at circuit breakers and instrument transformers there the localization would be in excess of like 80 85% so that is the thing uh, other thing for example gis and all we have a pretty high 
uh, because GIS also what happens is it depends upon the different voltages, the different uh, localization factors come into play. But because we were the first to put in the GIS factory, we are kind of leading the localization uh, in India. And it's a constant effort to keep on developing sources. But I can say that uh, for GIS also various ratings, it would be in the north of like 60, 65%, something like that. Okay, and uh, to answer to your question on the order booking side, the total nine months we have booked about uh, 44.5 billion of orders. About 32% of these orders are from the export segment, which takes to the total order booking from the export uh, market to around 16 billion, uh, roughly. And out of that 16 billion, 12 billion orders are from the good companies, including the 8 billion of uh, the, the UK HVDC transform order, order. So these are the numbers for nine months. And uh, for the financial, if you want to see the financial year, we'll have uh, further order booking from the related party as well as uh, third parties in terms of export segments for the quarter four. Got it, sir. Thank you so much. All the very best. Thank you, Mish. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shubhadeep Mitra from Nuwama. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so my question is uh, on the exports front. If I have to kind of break down the market sizing of both, uh, let's say, the export market that you're looking at, let's say, over the next one to two years, uh, and the domestic market, would it be possible for you to give us some color on that? No, Shubhaji, it is very difficult to give a number for the export market and all uh, because, you know, that's a very large, uh, that's like a global market we are talking about. I understand. So if, if, let me ask this in another fashion. So if I, uh, you know, were to gain some color from you in terms of how much of export order inflow or uh, sales would you be targeting, let's say, over the next two to three years? I, I think let's look at it differently. For us, whether order is from the domestic market or from the export market, we choose the one which is giving us a better profitability and a faster cash generation. We have been talking about selectivity in the last couple of years, and that strategy has played off. We have seen improvement in the financial numbers. We have seen improvement in the order booking numbers, both from the domestic as well as export segment. So wherever we get the right opportunity, to increase our profitability in cash, we choose that order. Understood, understood. So on your current capacity base, uh, you know, your current capacity can support how high a turnover. Would that be another way of looking at it? So Shivadeep, it is, you know, uh, uh, it will also depend upon product mix, voltage mix, uh, business line mix, so this is not a kind of a direct answer to it uh, that, okay, this is the kind of turnover that we can support or I can, uh, I'll give you a different uh, explanation on this one. See the peak revenue that we generated, I think the year 18, 19, uh, 17, 18, and 18, 19 was to the range of 42 to 44 billion INR. At present, we are running at a rate of say 30 billion INR. So, Capacity is the, in, or the volume is coming not only from factories, but the turnkey business. Suppose we win an HVDC project. That just needs to add more people, more engineers, who generate revenue and profitability. So it's difficult to give one short answer, but yes, we have the past experience and ability to grow our revenue significantly from here. Understood. Uh, secondly, sir, on the margins, clearly this has been a spectacular quarter in terms of margins. Uh, do you see these kind of margin levels sustainable uh, or were there any one-offs in this particular quarter, whether with regard to inventory or otherwise? There is no specific one-off. I think we have a higher confidence in terms of margin as compared to past and our endeavor is to maintain or improve these numbers. So, similar numbers in the double-digit range is something that you feel is sustainable? That's our endeavor, yes, for sure. It did not depends on the mix of project in a particular quarter and so on, but over a, let's say, uh, long term, in terms of few quarters, that's where the company is working to. 
Perfect, perfect. Uh, lastly, if you could also tell us what is the nine month uh, forex loss number that you have booked? Uh, if you can just give me, <coughs> yeah, just a moment. It's about, uh, I think, one, 105 million INR. 105 million INR. Okay, understood. I think there was also an earlier question with regard to how much of uh, your current order inflow in the nine months is exposed. I don't know if you already answered that. I I answered in the last question that uh, out of 34.5 billion, 33% of uh, 16 billion, uh, or about 16 billion INR are from the export segment. Perfect, sir. That, that, that answers all my questions. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shivali. Thank you. The next question is from the line of uh, Renu Baid from IIFL Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hello. Hi. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, congratulations for strong results. And good to see uh, Basisar back as the chairperson of the company now. Uh, so just I have two small basic questions. Uh, one, uh, while you started seeing large, uh, as in typically from an export perspective, we had various, we were also exporting earlier, uh, solutions and projects also. But in terms of large product exports, um, apart from HVDC transformers, where we, see, where we see large orders coming from the parent, uh, do you think there could be some scope for switch gears, AIS, GIS also along uh, with some large system projects or probably the global uh, capacities or the local capacities for such projects are sufficient to take care of the requirements? So, Renu, we are looking at an uptake there as well in AIS, GIS. For example, this year we have built, we have got an order from Senegal for a GIS project, uh, mm -hmm. which was like about more than 100 crores. So, we are looking at a good, uh, good uh, traction there as well on AIS, GIS also. Right, and because traditionally, if you see, as in compared to the other TND players, uh, GE has been a project company. So it was only during a down cycle where because orders were not there, it hit us on the negative side. And now when the growth is back, both products and projects should help drive that uh, extra um, beta in terms of growth rate for us. So uh, yes, the second sure. question is, um, just from an academic understanding perspective on the transformer part of the business, uh, if you can just help us understand two small things. Um, currently, what is the rated transformer capacity that we have? And uh, are we operating on two-shift, three-shift basis and why TTS and at the end of December for 12 months on a TTM basis, etc.? What is the approximate utilization level based on the two-shift or three-shift that we're running a transformer capacity? So I will not put it as a as a MVA capacity kind of thing for transformer, uh, Renu, primarily because if you, for example, if you manufacture a, I'm just saying, uh, HVDC transformer. So HVDC transformer of a 300 MVA might be more complex and would be equivalent for maybe like a uh, 700 MVA type of a normal transformer. So it's very difficult to actually put because a lot of things play uh, in there that whether it's a 765 kV single phase, 400 kV three phase, and there are multiple uh, factors which play into it. Totally so, appreciate because the volume and the mix will. Anyway, bring in 20% kind of volume differences from same capacity, depending yeah, so on the type of so it's, so it's pretty difficult and then reactor capacity different and then transformer capacity different. So uh, that's why it's, you know, it's very difficult to predict a kind of a um, capacity for a transformer plant. That is one thing. Second thing, yes, uh, we are operating a kind of two plus shift today for transformer. And uh, what was the third question? The same only, are we working on two shift or three shift basis? And I was just trying to look at some industry, just trying to compare or prepare some industry data points, which is where I was asking for rated installed capacity. So actual yes, production yes, yes. would be 20% higher than that based on the mix. So that doesn't matter. Just looking at, uh, because after any consolidation, it would be close to 28,000 MBA or uh, would be 32 types. So I will not put a number there, Renu, that uh, whether it's 28,000 or 22,000. So. Take it, take it, no problem. I think that's understandable. Uh, that's it. No other questions from my side. I think strong performance and uh, best wishes uh, going ahead as well. Thank you, Renu. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amit Anwani from PL Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, so thanks for taking my question. <clears throat> my first question pertains to again uh, the uh, the uh, related party transactions which you mentioned 10 billion uh, under approval. This was you said the, this orders are hello, am I audible? Yes. Yeah, you are audible. I'm so you said these orders are extended uh, with extended timeline. Just so, so just wanted to understand the timeline for these orders. And are the margins for these orders uh, similar to the base business margins? See the timeline, uh, and we are negotiating with the uh, group entities, and in fact, they are also further participating in the bid with the third party uh, customers to win these orders. The timeline for uh, entry deals will be decided is from uh, most likely from March to August of this year. Booking order, these orders in March is less likely, so I'll put next like, quarter and quarter for next financial year, when we expect to have a final outcome of these deals, whether they are, these are in favor of GE or not, and then whether we get it or not. So uh, actually, sir, I wanted to understand the duration of the delivery of this uh, order. The duration of delivery is about uh, uh, 12 to 18 months. Okay. And as so, you, so again, it differs different product lines. In some cases, 12 to 18 months, and some cases, 18 to 24 months. Right. And next question on on you mentioned that lead time has gone up, uh, uh, and we are seeing a huge surge in the exports uh, 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 power products market, and domestically also we are looking for you know the the surge in in the ordering from HUDC. So, what is your thought? Will will the lead time further increase, or this is the scenario you're looking at? This will stabilize at the current uh, uh, demand level. This what is your perspective for next one to two years on the overall uh, market scenario? No, so I think uh, the lead times are normally, of course, there are other factors also for the lead time, like for example, uh, the availability of the raw material and all as well. Because with today's growth happening globally, uh, even there is a, some stretch of capacities on the raw material side as well. But uh, I, I think that the, the lead times what we have today should be maintainable. That's what we feel, but uh, it will also depend upon how the market and the projects evolve in the short term as well. Like in a year, what kind of orders get divided, that will also have impact on lead times as well. Sure, sir. And uh, lastly, wanted to understand from you the status on, uh, you know, the HVDC ordering and domestic market, which uh, uh, we used to highlight, like for Tegar. So just wanted to understand what is the near-term pipeline and domestic market from HVDC site and overall addressable market here. So there are three projects which are there, which are being floated by the or TBCB as a developer. So one is Fatehgarh Badla and two projects are from Khabara. So yeah, the company is actively working with customers on the projects. So are we expecting an FY25? 35? 25. 25, 25. I think yes, it should get decided in the next year, next financial year. Sure, so thanks for taking my question. The next question is from the line of Dhruv Agrawal from Nivesha Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Good afternoon. Good evening, sir. So, congratulations on a good set of numbers, sir. Sir, basically, what had led to, like, you jump up in order intake of around 119% on quarter-on-quarter basis, sir? Like, from which sector are these major orders came from and, like, going ahead, going ahead from where do you see the major traction coming from, sir? So the orders are mainly coming because of the growth which is happening in the energy transition, like the renewable projects which are coming up and the transmission capacities which are getting built. So going forward also, that's going to rem that will remain as the main domain from where the orders will come up. And of course, now the government of India has come up with another plan of 80 gigawatt for thermal and all. So it's basically the increase of generation capacity associated transmission network is the order what we are getting. Okay. 
like sir, one more question related to that only. As the government has increased the investment outlay plan of like rupees 2.44 lakh crore to 4.75 lakh crore for integration of over 500 gigawatt renewable capacity. So, what kind of demand we can expect the transformer would contribute? And out of the state transformer demand, what share would company be able to cater to, sir? So you know it is it is a bit difficult to quantify the numbers in that value because that's a complete transmission plan that requires right of way transmission line cost substation cost transformer cost voltages HVDC so there are a lot of combinations which are there it's difficult to predict a transformer market out of that. Sir, market share can you please quantify like if you can give some color. No, market share we will not quantify, bro. Okay, okay. Like, sir, and sir, like, what kind of the margins we can expect in coming, let's say, like in 24, 25, and the revenue guidance, sir, as well? So, generally, bro, we don't uh, give a revenue guidance or margin guidance as a specific number. In the call, we have a significant uh, uptick in the order backlog. Now, the order backlog is about 58 uh, billion plus, I know. So, this should give us a increase in revenue in the quarters to come and in terms of EBITDA margin as I mentioned in the earlier question that on a nine month basis we are generating an EBITDA of 10 percent and our endeavor is to maintain and try to improve this further. Okay, fair enough sir. And like like last one question sir, like if we compare the sales growth on year on year basis, it has increased by 8 percent and, and the EBITDA numbers if we compare on year on year basis, it has increased by 110 percent. Like, sir, why is it so, sir? Like, is there any increase in fixed prices or reduction in the raw material prices? Can you see fixed by that, sir? It's a combination of many factors. And the first and foremost, we have taken many, many internal actions to spend the our The first uh, theme that we talked in the last two years was the selectivity. And we have been very selective in choosing the deals with less risk, better profitability, and faster cash generation. The second is internal productivity in terms of lean that we talked about. Third factor is the control over cost. And the fourth is the mix of the business. We, we are doing less of the turnkey business, which has, uh, let's say, higher risk and low uh, margin. And we are higher on the product business and also on the export side. The export business gives better profitability. So all these different combinations have worked well for us to improve profit significantly. Okay, right. Okay, sir. Fair enough. All the best for, for, for the future, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jonas Butta from Birla Mutual Funds. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir, for the opportunity and congratulations on a good set of numbers. Uh, two questions, sir. Firstly, on the gross margin. So if I go back in time, you know, around uh, FI20 and right through FI24, our our commentary on gross margins was that, you know, we are operating at sub-30% gross margins and our target was to take it at a steady state level of 32%, which was, which was always been our long-term average. Now, for the past two quarters, we've sort of clocked about 36-odd percent and which you've you know, sort of uh, alluded to, you know, is, is, is a factor of mix, uh, etc. However, you know, you know, given the current order backlog of 58 billion rupees, do you believe that the mix is such that these levels of margin, so this, these are the new normal margins, at least in the current backlog, because most of these orders, ever since we've changed our strategy, these orders would have come in the last four, five quarters, and, you know, they are all reflective of a, uh, substantially higher gross margin than our long-term average? Yes. So, as I mentioned earlier as well, and we have been communicating for a couple of years about focus on profitability in cash and ration. So, you're right uh, that your booking orders at sub-30 and the endeavor was to take it to the range of 30 to 32 percent, making improvement in execution over the order booking volume. But along that side, the actions in pricing finding which areas to target, which customers to target more, we have been able to improve our pricing and uh, improve our mix of the project, which has helped us to generate about 35% of 
gross margin on a nine month basis. As I said, our endeavor is going to continue to focus on these directions. You have better profitability and focus, uh, profitability and as well as the cash emission. So if you also see the cash number, we have generated 3.3 billion of cash in the nine months, which is again a result of all the actions we have been communicating in the last uh, two years or so. Sure. Could you uh, highlight what is the broad mix between projects and products in our backlog? And what was it maybe start, you know, two years ago? Well, as I don't have that much information as of now. Uh, maybe we can uh, have it uh, in the next call or so. We'll keep, keep a note of that and try to present it in the next call. So that will be helpful. My uh, second question was on uh, on the... HVDC orders, particularly that from the group, uh, is it so that as in you know the uh, if if the same sort of orders were executed for a domestic client uh, and the kind of imports that were required, uh, you know has there been a material change? So you know point being just an example. So even if we were executing a domestic HVDC order, uh, at least previously thyristor balls etc were imported. Is that going to be the case even in this export order uh, from the group entity or we've internally developed uh, manufacturing capabilities therein? So, uh, just one clarification here. This is basically the order only for supply of transformers for the HVDC. Okay, so this is not the terminal bit. Not the terminal. Okay. We are just supplying, we are, we are just supplying part of transformers for a HVDC project which is being executed by UK Grid Solutions. Understood. Understood. And the, the last bit question that I had and I want to squeeze in is sir, the pace of growth in our other expenses, if I see in the last three years, has outpaced sales growth. And even in this quarter, while we've done a phenomenal job on gross margins, a lot of what flew through or could have flown through the, to EBITDA was taken away from a higher uh, growth in other expenses, uh, you know, you know, your sales grew at 8% or other expenses grew by almost 14%. Victor was the case in Q2 FI24. So what seems to be leading to this kind of uh, growth in other expenses? So, as I mentioned, for the quarter, we have about 100 million of FX in FX loss, mark to market on the hedge contracts for the quarter which is more notional in nature and more in accounting, uh, the way we have to book losses on the forward contract. If we exclude that, then the increase is more in line with revenue uh, in terms of the, the expenses that grow with revenue. For example, travel or freight and uh, basically the the repair maintenance, et cetera. So, so was that reactive have... in the negative other income numbers? Sorry, the, the 10 crore uh, FX loss. So, for the quarter, we had about 15 crore of forex loss. But for the first six months, we had recognized 5 crore of income in the other income. The way accounting treatment or the representation happened in the financial statement, that this qu quarter loss of 15 crore is first 5 crore is offset against the other income because it was taken, 5 crore was the gain taken in the first six months. So, on a nine month basis, there is no um, uh, other income. And the, the balance 10 crore is put as a forex loss in the other expenses. So on a nine month basis, there is a 10 crore loss represented in the other expense. And on a, uh, sorry, for the quarter, yeah, for nine months, there is a 10 crore loss in the other expense. And for the quarter, there is a 15 crore loss, five offsetted against the other income in six months, and 10 represented in the other expense. Got it. Thank you, and all the very best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nikhil Abhyankar from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you, sir. Most of the questions are answered. So basically, I want to understand, do we qualify for all the tenders as far as indigenous value addition is concerned for HVDC and statcoms? So just one um, um, I, I'd like to answer that way that even in Champa Kurukshetra, a large part of the HVDC which included thyristor walls and transformers was delivered by our local factories. 
So we are qualified actually for uh, these bids. Okay. Uh, and so, is there any uh, addressable market for uh, RDSS scheme opportunities? Yes, so we have an addressable market for RDSS scheme, and in fact, in this nine months, we have booked few projects which are not of a big value because RDSS schemes have multiple uh, scopes in it. So normally, our digital business is supporting so. In our RDSS project, our digital offering is close to about somewhere in the range of close to about between 10 to 15 percent of the overall project cost. So those orders have been booked by us during the first nine months. Okay, those are ordered. And what is usually what is the execution time of these orders? I think because we are doing the software piece of it, so I think it should be somewhere between 12 to 15 months. Okay, understood. And so sequentially, earlier in the call, you mentioned margin is a function of mix and operating leverage. So sequentially, our EBITDA margin has improved to 80 bits. So will you attribute it to better product mix or uh, higher utilization? Both, actually. Mix as well as uh, mix of projects, mix of uh, different product lines, and as well as uh, execution of uh, projects with better margin. Okay, sir. Understood. That's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Inderjeet Singh Bhatia from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hello, gentlemen. Thanks for the opportunity. Just a couple of questions. First is a uh, couple of quarters. Uh, it was mentioned that we are still working through some of the legacy contracts which were lower margin. Uh, are we done with those contracts? Was there any contribution of those projects in? in uh, quarter three that's one second is uh, based on existing order book uh, would you give us a number as to what could be the blended timeline of execution 15 months 18 months whatever you can share so in terms of the the projects with lower margin or let's say the projects where we had uh, taken some some uh, cost over in the past the quantum is reduced but still, we may have some of uh, those projects in the backlog. Over a period of next two to three quarters, we we expect those projects to be uh, fully executed. Would it be? Would you want to hazard a kind of a, give us a number as to 10%, 20%? Is it meaningful contribution? I think that very specific uh, information we would not uh, like to share uh, at this moment. Got it. And uh, on the on the second question, uh... yeah. So so timeline of execution again it depends on the product lines. As Sandeep mentioned, some of the projects have timeline of 12 to 18 months. Some of the projects have timeline. Blended number for the existing order book. Uh, <laughs> difficult to say the blended uh, timeline for the entire backlog. Yeah. But as we said that. Uh, our run rate is like uh, 3,000 crore of revenue, roughly 800 crore per quarter. So we should have, we should see an uptick in the revenue in the next financial year. Got it, got it. Uh, okay. Last question is uh, uh, in terms of pricing, uh, say some of the larger projects, uh, uh, products like Transformers, has there been any serious uptick in pricing? Uh, or what you are seeing from the competition, given that uh, capacity is limited and you're seeing a lot of orders being given out. So, yeah, I would say that yes, the uh, the pricing has increased. Uh, that's what I will say. Got it. Thank you. Thank you, Narjit. As there are no further questions from the participants, I now hand the conference over to Ms. Megha Gupta for closing comments. Thank you all for joining us today for GTND India Limited Earnings Call. We hope the insights provided by our speakers have been informative and valuable to you. We value the trust and support of our investors and analysts and ensure to remain committed to maintain transparent communication and fostering strong relationships. If you have any further questions or require additional information, Please do not hesitate to reach out to me or our communications leader, Ms. Kanika Arora. Once again, thank you so much for your participation. 
we look forward for your continued support as we embark on an exciting journey ahead thank you thank you on behalf of gtnd india limited that concludes this conference thank you for joining us you may now disconnect your lines